Hi, and welcome to Paw Prints on the Mountain, brought to you by the Humane Society of the White Mountains. I'm your host, Mike Bosley. In just a couple moments, we will get to chat with Dina, the executive director, as well as Terry, who is the volunteer coordinator for the Happy Tales. She's just Happy Tales. That's all she does. We'll get to that in just a minute. Before we do, let's go ahead and get to Bosley's pet peeve. Now, Bosley's pet peeve is merely my opinion. It is not necessarily the opinion of the board nor the Humane Society. That's my disclaimer. So when we're young, we are all taught the basics of life. Now, such as, take for instance, when you're in first grade, you are taught very diligently, if you are on fire, you stop, drop, and roll. Well, let's face it, most of us have never really been on fire. That is unless, of course, your friend happens to shoot you with a Roman candle while you're wearing a hooded t-shirt out camping. <laughs> Somebody Thank here you. has been on fire. Yes, yes, <laughs> what a memory. Thank you, Daniel. Now, since most of us haven't been caught on fire, we all do know stop, drop, and roll is what you do if you catch on fire. But we also have smoke detectors in our homes to make sure that we are alerted if there is a fire. Most of us won't have house fires, but that smoke detector is there just in case that situation arises or somebody burnt the chicken. So we've got smoke detectors to alert us just in case, and then if we are in that situation, we know what to do. The exact same goes for you and your beloved fur baby. Let's say, for instance, some way your dog escapes. Before that even happens, your animal should be microchipped, which can be done at the Humane Society. If your animal gets out and loose, now there's a very quick way that we can get a hold of you. Now let's say, for some reason, you don't have that first alert and your dog is out. Just like in a fire situation, you would stop, drop, and roll, the first thing you should do is call the Humane Society. The Humane Society of the White Mountains is just that, the Humane Society of the whole White Mountains. We're talking Navajo County, Taylor, uh, some of Apache County. All of this area, Pine Top Lakeside, of course, all of this area, the dogs come that are collected come to the Humane Society of the White Mountains. And that is the best and first place to look for your animal. But of course, like I said, the best thing to do is to get your dog microchipped. And of course, we can do that at the Humane Society of the White Mountains. Now I'm saying the Humane Society of the White Mountains because I'm trying to make sure there's a point between the National Humane Societies and all of their views and the Humane Society of the White Mountains and what we stand for here on the mountain. But real quick, let's go ahead and meet our guest. So hi, Dina. Hi. Hi, Terry. Hey, how are you? So tell us about microchipping that the Humane Society does. Okay, so we do microchip. We microchip all our adopted animals, uh -huh. cats and dogs. So even if someone has a cat that gets away, we're able to, you know, if it's brought in or whatever. <clears throat> so they can get a microchip for $20 and they don't need any appointment. You can come in anytime we're open, which is Tuesday through Friday from 1030 to five. And then on Saturdays, 10 to five. So with that $20, we also will register that microchip with you know to you with the microchip company the only thing with that we run across that once in a while a microchip doesn't work is because someone has changed their phone number or their address and not let the microchip company know so it's very important when people have animals that are microchipped right. to keep everything current and that is your responsibility once we insert that microchip and do it the original time well when you move <coughs> houses you have to change your utility bill I don't see why you wouldn't right change your dog's right. microchip. And there's right. nothing as frustrating as getting a dog or a cat into the shelter and we are so excited it's microchipped, disconnected phone number. Oh, yes. Man. And I mean it's 
That's it's so, so sad. often, isn't it? And, and here's and it's this too poor often. little dog or cat that wants to go home. Yeah. Now, another way to check for animals, and I do this, you know, I might maybe if my employer's not watching, I might get on Facebook from time to time throughout the day. Um, I see the Humane Society all the time making posts of this dog was found and this dog was found. So that's another great place to go and see A, if your dog was found or if do you even recognize that dog? Exactly. I know all the dogs in my neighborhood, not just mine. Right, of course you and do. And so I can tell, oh, well, that's that neighbor's dog. Right, right, right. So <laughs> this is another great avenue to go for. Yeah, and just to interject one more thing quickly, um, and it's best if your dog is lost and we say, well, yeah, we do have a German Shepherd in or whatever, it's best to come and look. People's perspective perspective of color. Some may call, call a dog fawn, some may call it tan, some may call it brown, and it's the right. same dog. Right. So it's really good to come in and and our employees. Fawn. fawn That's a color. Fawn is a color. Bosley. That's a color. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Have you not seen them out in the woods with the little spots on them? Well, yes. Okay. Bambi. That's a color. Bambi. The spots are now a color. <laughs> no, the, the brown part is a color. Okay. Okay. Anyway, but one of our employees will walk the people in, and and maybe that dog or cat is in fact in the shelter. Right. So. And and we see different breeds too. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> you know, someone may have say a, a shepherd mix we see the Australian Shepherd in it uh-huh so you know so we've listed it as an Australian cattle dog <coughs> right yeah. so and, and the other really important part about this is like you said we are the only humane society up here and so we have contracts with Navajo County and with the town of Pine Top Lakeside okay so your your pet actually could be from Winslow and there's no room at the Holbrook Jail for it, or the Holbrook Jail. <laughs> the whole, it's been a long week. The Holbrook sh Animal Shelter for it, or the Snowflake one, so they're gonna bring it all the way over to us. Wow. Yeah. So anywhere you live up here, it doesn't matter, or if you're traveling and you've lost your pet, we should always be at your first call. And our number's 928-368-5295. And please, like Terry says, if you're able to come in and look physically, for yourself. Um, it, a perfect example is this gal sent a friend in and said, nope, it's not her dog. It was her dog. She didn't recognize her friend's dog with us. And so the lady, um, Debbie, called her again and said, I know this is your dog. Please come yourself. And sure enough, it was. You know, wow. It's amazing. Yeah. And those microchips do wonderful things. We had a dog with us that was found out by Shamrock a couple of years ago. She was microchipped to a man in Phoenix, and that dog had been missing for over a year. And somehow it made it from Phoenix to Shumway. Not Shamrock, Shumway. And, and was picked up by Animal Control, and we were able to get a hold of the, the original owner. I can't blame them. I wouldn't want to live in Phoenix either. But no, I mean, I, no. I, I, that is know, an amazing story. It, it, that, it is yes. amazing. You know, and you hear some of these on the TV once in a while. We get some of those amazing stories. Right. We get those sad stories like the ASPCA makes all those commercials over, you know? Um, we just don't have the money, nor would we spend it if we did to let everyone know that. You know, our community is very aware of the problems we have. And if not, come see us, we'll show you some. Now, just as they should have 911 on their fridge for a fire emergency, what is the number that should be on their fridge for a fur baby emergency? 928. 368-5295. Okay. Miss Terry, would you mind? Um, Dina. <laughs> Dina, would you mind saying that again for us? 928-368-5295. All right. We've given them lots of opportunities now right. to and, write and that. And follow our Facebook also, which is the Humane Society of the White Mountains, because they are posted the stray animals that come in, and we post every day there when we get them. Now, something else, we're going to get to Happy Tales That's here fine. soon, but this, this is something that does need to be talked about. Now, there's not always room at the shelter. Correct. So we need to call if there is, a, if we as the public run across an animal, we need to call the shelter and make sure that it's a good place to bring it. Now, you guys have a huge network Right. that we can access, right? but we need to call first. Showing up isn't always the best thing. No. no, it's not. And especially, you know, like this time of the year, people like to trap cats and everything. You know, when we're full, we're full. Trap cats? Yes. 
We we get a lot of that. They they'll trap neighborhood feral. cats, feral cats, and they just think that they can bring them into us. If we oh, don't really? have room, we don't have room, and. So what we really will need people's patience with is owner surrender pets for whatever reason that you're not able to keep your pet anymore. Give us a call. Don't wait till the last minute I'm leaving town tomorrow because we may not have that room for your pet. And uh, we can't pull more room from anywhere. Right. You know, when we're full, we're full. We are constantly networking and, and moving animals to other locations, you know, that we network with to get them adopted we did faster. Yeah, exactly. You know, last, well, last week we moved 20 animals in one day. Yeah. Wow. And, 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 and our facility is full. Yeah. It was full two days later. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yesterday we also moved um, a mama who had seven newborns. Yes. To a rescue in the valley where she's going to be fostered in a home. Now, there's another valid great point. When an owner takes the love and time to surrender their animal, the animal doesn't have to go through a quarantine period. Is that correct? That is correct. When they do it, you know, and tell us that, yes, this is my pet, we do it as an owner surrender. We can then run it through the process quicker because it doesn't have to be held for the legal time that the strays have to be held. So that way it can actually move on to its forever home, hopefully <coughs> sooner than somebody right. who just lost their dog. Or right, right. Did found this found pet. Found yeah. this You dog. know, honesty right. goes a long way to help these animals be able to move faster. Yeah. And and the other thing is, you know, we've all heard, we we come to the shelter at 6.30 in the morning or an employee, I'm a volunteer, so I'm not there quite that early. Um, and we'll find a dog tied to the fence. How sad is that? Or a box of puppies or whatever, but especially an adult dog. You know, work with us. Give the Give your pet a chance so we know its names so we know its history so we know what it knows does it like kids does it like right. and, and give us the opportunity to find that dog and rehome that dog into a proper environment and give us that information right and medical medical, medical because history. we've we've had one um, in the past that actually had valley fever and so it took us a while to figure that out, why he was so sluggish, you know, and blood work. We did the blood work finally and got valley fever. So, so we treated him for that. Still sluggish. The titers are good. He can come off that medicine. Mm -hmm. Turns out that the original owner came in and says, so is he on his thyroid medicine? So then that's more blood work. Now he's on thyroid medicine and he's, and he's doing thriving. Yeah. You know, he's got the energy of a normal dog and he's not just, you know, laying around and gaining weight and all that. So, so if you're honest with us, you know, and let us know what they've been on. You know, we had one dog that somebody uh, was turning in said it had cancer. It turned out that it had um, a pancreas pancreatitis pink pink something whatever. to okay. do with that but it was very treatable with medication oh bell yes 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 we had her, we had her so, on, on pain and she is in a loving home yeah and thriving yeah. But, so if people are just honest with us it's not that we're not willing to put the money into them it's right. that we need to know what they need and the more we know when they come to us the faster we can get them what they need so it's really all about just making sure and helping those animals. Exactly. Absolutely. So when we come back in just a moment, we're going to hear about how a huge opportunity, how you can help the animals there at Happy Tales. We'll talk about that coming up in just moments. Stay with us. And welcome back to Paw Prints on the Mountain, brought to you by the Humane Society of the White Mountains. I'm your host, Mike Bosley. Joining us this afternoon is Dina and Terry. Hi, ladies. Hi. Hi. So, as we were talking about, we're really, the Humane Society is all about the animals, obviously. Absolutely. We're all about saving lives, and we as humans are doing our best to help save these lives. And that kind of ties into the Humane Society's biggest fundraiser of the year. 
and that is the program you're in charge of. So it is Mike. What do you uh, do? Happy Tales. Yes. Happy Tales is August 24th okay. at the Orchard at Charlie Clark's starting at 11 in the morning and ending at 5 p.m. Why do we have to be there at like 8 then? Because we're setting up. So <laughs> we're no, actually, okay, okay. Bosley, we need to <laughs> be there at 7 to start picking up stuff. If so last year, late. last year, last <laughs> year, yeah. <laughs> Last year, we had over 800 individual items donated. donated. Wow. Everything, everything, every item at Happy Tales is donated by our most generous community, by the businesses in our community, by the individuals in our community. It's, it's amazing. Um, we've started processing things. Um, our main processing area is Chrissy's Ski and Board Shop in Pine Top. Okay. She, Chrissy Almore has generously donated her facility for quite a few years um, where we accept donation donations uh, put them together we have amazing volunteers that take baskets and make them into just amazing products beauty products cooking products on and on and on wine wine baskets, baskets. baskets so. yeah so um, <coughs> we're um, in July we're open Monday Wednesday Friday from 10 to 3 okay starting August 1st uh, Monday through Friday, 10 to 3, to accept all the wonderful donations and, of course, sell our tickets. Yeah. Now, when you ask for donations, this isn't like the thrift shop where we ask for your new or gently used items. What kind of donations are you looking for? Wow. Um, this morning, we had an amazing uh, chainsaw donated. Oh, wow. Um, Sportsman's Warehouse has already donated a great kayak for us. Oh, boy. Um, a, a neighbor that lives near me has donated two kayaks with their trailer and the uh, set up to racks to set them in your garage. Oh, wow. Um, and well, bottles of perfume. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, and we have a limited edition Arlen Ness Victory motorcycle. Oh, wow. Yeah. It is beautiful. So watch our Facebook because pictures of that will be coming start out. coming out. Guns, knives, uh, trips, uh, gift yeah. cards. Golf packages. Golf packages. It just goes Diamond on. Diamondback tickets usually. Yeah. Stuff like that. So basically, you're looking for stuff of reasonable, decent value. Great. Right. That can be donated that in turn will be either put in the silent auction or the live auction where it can really do the most to benefit well, the animals. And see, we have the silent auction, the live auction. We have the blitz auction, the dessert auction, raffle baskets. Um, our, and our summer raffle and our doghouse thrift stop shop that's right. is there. That's exactly. right. That's right. So and, and that's there as the doghouse boutique. Yes. <laughs> you know, and so, and then of course adoptions are going on too. Absolutely. So there's so much, so anything large or small, you know, if it's, if it's small, that's how we get a lot of our baskets is we put items together. Exactly. Okay. Those exactly. volunteers, we can't do this without the great volunteers we have. Oh, right. The amount of man hours that go in, and, and it's more women hours <laughs> that go Sorry, in Bosley. too. <laughs> that go into this event. Uh, I think Terry, you and I actually started talking about this in January. We did, we you did. You know, and started we ordering, did. you know, the the flyers, the everything we needed, right. putting it right. all together so that we're to the point now where we're ready to get donations and get them processed. Yeah, well, it takes 120, <clears throat> last year was a, there were 120 volunteers to pull this off. Wow. 120 people in green shirts. And that, Charlie Clark's is flooded with green shirts running all over. Absolutely. You can never tell where they're running, but they're always running We're somewhere. We're yeah. moving. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, and we invite, uh, I mean, it's open to the public, but a lot of times what we've done is we've invited some of our networking partners from other animal places to come up. And they're, they are blown away by our volunteer support in this event. And, and how many, the community, they are just really interested. Really, yeah. they're amazed. They said they've never seen an event like this down in the city with this much support and that much money and items in that short it's, of time. It's just, 
it, it it's emotional is what it is right yeah. because and everyone and of course well-behaved dogs are absolutely invited right we um, we see so many of our dogs that have were adopted from the shelter five six ten years ago that come yeah. to the event it's so neat to see that has got to be them and their for uh, that's got to just be yes it truly is amazing it is truly it is amazing. yeah, it, yeah. Now, so Speaking of truly amazing, there's this gorgeous piece of jewelry. Oh my god. That gosh. is truly amazing. Tell us a little bit about that. And and I do apologize. I forgot to bring a poster. That's Peter, a kicker out. <laughs> no, not no, yet. No, yeah, no. wait until Happy okay, Tales is over. We'll, we'll. Um, Peter <laughs> Timms with White Mountain Jewelers has so generously donated his time, his energy, and his money, and he created a custom piece of jewelry for us that um, is a... It's an outline of a kind of a nondescript adorable dog with diamonds in the tail, the collar, and the eye um, with a 18-inch, 14-carat gold uh, necklace. Wow. He valued this piece at $1,800, and he gave it to us to raffle off. The raffle tickets are $10 each. It'd be a great gift for your partner for whatever and you know I've had people say to me well I'm not much of a jewelry person I said well buy a couple tickets if you win you can donate it back to us and right. we'll raffle it off right and, right. and, and then Frank Smith was oh, a sponsor yeah. in that also and Frank Smith has been sponsoring this this you know the light or the summer raffle item for years, years and years, and years. So the community support is just amazing it truly is yeah well that's another thing I wanted to touch on just how truly community the Humane Society of the White Mountains is would you mind expounding on that on just a moment so you know you want to know about the support what all we do in the yes. community you know the support is unreal but but what people need to realize Bosley is that the problem that we have at the Humane Society is a community problem. What we do is we try to prevent any disease outbreaks there or getting out into our community. You know, um, but so we need all the community support we can. We don't get any financial support from the Humane Society of the United States, the ASPCA. A lot of people think because we say Humane Society of the White Mountains, we're affiliated with them. We're, we're not. not. We're our own entity. Um, we're self-supporting. And self-supporting means we have to ask our community for donations. Well, you know, and and help. Um, we get it from our doghouse thrift shop is right. where we get our funding from. The very minimal grants that we're able to get, donations and events, events that, like this Happy Tales. You know, we always welcome donations of any type. Uh, one of the most important things that our community gives to us is their time, mm -hmm. like Terry a right. great volunteer one of many but the amount of time mm -hmm. that you give to these animals and our cause is priceless yeah. I agree you oh, know we're saving lives exactly I mean, that is entirely that's the definition of priceless it, it is. really it is. really it is. is you know and, and let me just add as of the adoption chair in the chair of Happy Tales, I've been a volunteer for I don't know eight or nine or ten years for a long time. As long as I've known you. Yeah, and I a lot of times I, I speak to people and they say, you know, I'd really like to volunteer, but it would be so sad, and I just and. And I just laugh and I said, no, it's the happiest thing in the world to see these broken souls that come yes. into our shelter. I get emotional. That leave with their tails wagging. Oh yeah. And, you know, so it's not, it's, it's joyful. It's to see these happy, I'm fostering two little puppies right now. You're and always fostering two <laughs> little puppies. And lifting them up and getting puppy kisses and then seeing them go on to their new lives with their family is the best joy I could have. But yet it's a bittersweet. Well, you yeah. know, and that's, <laughs> you can't help that. You know, in the rescue world, what we do is that we're always putting the 
the best interest of the animal ahead of ours. Well, okay. you know, and so it is. It's awesome watching them come in broken and leave mended and happy and know secure. They're secure with right. what they are now. Right. You know, and that's always awesome. Some of those ones that need the extra that we have to give them. Yeah. You know, for as a rescuer. <clears throat> It's always a bittersweet thing. They, we know they're going to the best home. Right. But in here, it's like we won't see them. Except for these two very noisy puppies that woke me up at 4 o'clock this morning. Well, that was the last time because oh. you've been up since then. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, anyway. but, but the community support, you know, and, and, and then again, too, Terry, the people that say they can't help at the shelter because it's sad. Oh, my goodness, have we got other opportunities. Right. You know, Absolutely. we have opportunities with Happy Tales. We have opportunities at our doghouse thrift shop for volunteers, you know. And like I say, the most selfless thing you can give us is your time. Absolutely. Whether it's with the animals or making the money for the animals. Speaking of making the money, what are the doghouse thrift shops summer hours? Because this is the bread and butter of the Humane Society, so let's give them let's two minutes Let's do definitely of the show. touch on that. So our hours at the thrift shop are Monday through Saturday from 10 to 5, and we accept gently used donations Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 4.30. Okay. So we're not accepting donations on Mondays because, you know, we just There's don't have the man, we things. just don't have the manpower to accept them on Mondays. Okay. And so, um, but we definitely, that's how we operate that business is with your gently used donations. And the uh, people running Doghouse Thrift Shop, there's awesome sales once a month? Or oh, every weekend there's something every different. Every weekend. Yes. Yeah. Once a month, the first weekend of every month is 25% off everything. Wow. And I, then, yeah. yeah. I didn't know it, but. But I went there looking for for a cane and the gentleman's like well I don't know if we have a cane but we have crutches you have this huge thing of crutches and I was like well if I ever break anything I know where I'm coming hopefully I won't need them though. that's right exactly you know the the donations that we get are amazing so regardless of what you're looking for stop in and see definitely it's worth a we check. could have it very possible you know well thank you for joining us this time we sincerely appreciate it before we go ladies could you say it at the same time what is the phone number that's supposed to be on their fridge 928-368-5295 that was way better than i could have done <laughs> thank you ladies till next time i'm mike bosley your host we look forward to seeing you right here on paw prints on the mountain brought to you by the humane society of the white mountains